Justin Zorick, and this is Captain Marvel Culture. Here at Captain Marvel Culture, we like to examine the history and sociological significance of all the Captain Marvels, but more importantly, we need to set the record straight. Now, just yesterday, Dwayne Johnson, the pro wrestler known as The Rock, just came out and announced that he's going to be playing Black Adam. Now everybody assumes that Black Adam is going to be the villain in a movie called Shazam with a hero named Shazam, or is he named Captain Marvel? Now, it looks like on a lot of those websites that then posted up this news instantly, Black Adam's announced! Black Adam's announced! Dwayne Johnson's going to be Black Adam! Hear ye! Hear ye! Next thing you know, if you read down the comments, you're going to find someone say, Hey, isn't this Shazam supposed to be called Captain Marvel? And then someone's going to come in talking about copyrights, and someone's going to get confused about who did what in what lawsuit to whom and where, and isn't Captain Marvel a Marvel Comics character? And that uh, then, then the fertilizer hits the oscillator, so let's just set the whole record straight. I'm going to try to get through you as quick as I can all the major Captain Marvels that you got to know about when you're talking about the subject and before this movie comes out, or any other movie that happens to have any Captain Marvel or Captain Marvel related character in it. So, set your stopwatches, line up your abacuses, or is that abacai, and start counting. Let's see how many Captain Marvels we can name and how long it takes. To start, 1939, Fawcett Publications, a large and diverse publisher of magazines, decided to get into the comic book superhero racket, seeing as to the success of Superman and other superhero comic books. So, they told a couple of their staff writers and artists, uh, Bill Parker and C.C. Beck, to come up with a superhero. First, it was going to be six heroes, each with a different power, but the editors said, no, just give me one, and so they came up with one. And that first hero would be young Billy Batson, who would meet an ancient wizard named Shazam, who would give him the power to speak my name, which would be, of course, Shazam, which would transform Billy Batson into a mighty hero who would have powers of a half a dozen ancient heroes and gods and stuff that would actually spell out his name. S for Solomon, who would give him the power of wisdom. H for Hercules, who would give him the power of strength. A for Atlas, who would give him the power of stamina. Z for Zeus, who would give him the power of power. A for Achilles, who would give him the power of courage, and M for Mercury, who would give him the power of speed. Thus, all those heroes' names would spell out Shazam, and the name of this hero would be Captain Thunder. But then it turned out that uh, the publishers thought that that was too clamorous or annoying or whatever, so let's change the name, and artist Pete Costanza came up with the idea Captain Marvelous, and someone said, let's shorten it a little and call him Captain Marvel, and Captain Marvel it was, and first was going to be put out in Flash Comics, but another company put out a Flash comic, so it was going to be put out in Thrill Comics, but another company put out Thrilling Comics, so it was going to be put out in Wiz Comics, and nobody put out a comic with that title, so Wiz Comics came out, and there on the cover was Gangway for Captain Marvel, and that was the first Captain Marvel. And he wound up being so successful, he outsold Superman, and even had the first motion picture with the superhero in it, was The Adventures of Captain Marvel. But wouldn't you know what? The publishers of Superman didn't like this. So, we're going to call the publishers of Superman DC Comics. They've been through a lot of names over the years, but you know them best as DC Comics, so that's how we're going to refer to them. So DC Comics looked at Captain Marvel and decided to issue a lawsuit saying that Captain Marvel was too much like Superman, and that they were copying Superman stories, and Fawcett came back saying, you abandoned the copyright because your newspaper strips didn't have the copyright notice in it, and besides, he's not a ripoff, he's a different character, and I'm going to spare you all the rigmarole and just jump straight forward to 1953, in which, after a decision by the courts that would have them going back and forth trying to see what Captain Marvel stories copied, what Superman stories, and back and forth, Fawcett Publications looked at the fact that comic book sales were dropping, superheroes in particular were dropping, and decided to settle out of court, pay DC Comics $400,000, and promise to stop publishing Captain Marvel ever again. So let's move forward through the 1950s when DC Comics rebooted all its superheroes, or a bunch of them anyway, and formed the Justice League of America. Let's go to the early 60s now where a company called, at the time, Atlas Comics noticed that a superhero team book was selling and told Stan Lee, hey, give me a superhero team book. 
So Stan Lee created the Fantastic Four, with uh, Jack Kirby drawing the first issue, and I'm not going to get into how much was Stan Lee and how much was Jack Kirby, that's a story for another time, but next thing you knew, the company that published Fantastic Four was also publishing Spider-Man and Captain America and the Avengers and everything else, and they decided they needed a new name, so they called themselves Marvel Comics. So, what happens now? Marvel Comics leads the pop culture explosion of comic books, and by 1966, you've even got a frickin' TV show, Batman. So next thing you know, everybody's kid's brother's uncle's dog is starting a new comic book company and creating new superheroes, including Myron Fast, publishing Schlockmeister Supreme, who publishes a comic book called Captain Marvel, with his hero, Captain Marvel, who has absolutely nothing to do with the original Captain Marvel. It says right there in the first issue that he is based on a character created by Carl Burgos, who created the original Human Torch. But in this case, this Captain Marvel was an alien, a robot, an android from another planet sent down to Earth to try to keep Earth from falling into an apocalyptic wasteland like his home planet did. And he took on an alter ego of Willy Winkle, mild-mannered college professor, and had a best buddy of a young boy named Billy Baxton. And what was the power of this alien robot? He could separate his body parts, and he could bring them back together. He would separate them by saying, split! He would bring that them back together by saying, Zam! Get it? Split. Zam. Billy Baxton. Rip off. Nah. But, let's face it, those comic books actually were pretty bad. They sucked. And only six comic books with that character ever came out. But, 1967 rolls around, Marvel Comics sees this, they say, hey, we're Marvel Comics, we ought to have a Captain Marvel. So, Stan Lee creates a new Captain Marvel. Gene Colan draws him. And there was a lawsuit between MF Enterprises and Marvel Comics over who owned the trademark for Captain Marvel. And well, I guess Marvel Comics won, because MF Enterprises never published another Captain Marvel, and Marvel Comics did. And the hero that Stan Lee created was also an alien. Only he was a warrior, not a robot. He was a captain in the military of the Kree Empire, and his name was mar -Vell. Two parts, two L's. And so when he would introduce himself to Earthlings as Captain Marvell. It was Captain Marvel. So there it is, Captain Marvel. And he took on the alter ego of Dr. Walter Lawson, a mild-mannered rocket scientist, and got himself a job at The Cape, which was a rocket base, later admitted to be Cape Canaveral. And just so you know, because this is going to come back later, the head of security at The Cape was Carol Danvers. And there was sort of a Lois Lane Clark Kent thing going on between Walter Lawson, Carol Danvers, and Captain Marvel. And we're going to get back to Carol Danvers. Eventually, teenager Rick Jones, the kid who was caught in the Gamma Bomb testing zone, which created the Incredible Hulk, wound up being the alter ego of this Captain Marvel. By banging together these negabands on his wrists, he would switch atoms with Captain Marvel in the negative zone. So, Marvel Comics now has the trademark of the name Captain Marvel, which means only Marvel Comics can put out a comic book with the name Captain Marvel on the cover, or in the title. You got that. This is important. There'll be a test later. So, next thing you know, it's 1972. Now, either Carmine Infantino got the idea to do this, or Jack Kirby got the idea to do this and told Carmine Infantino. Both of them are dead. We can't question them anymore. But, one way or another, DC Comics got in touch with Fawcett Publications, and... Next thing you knew, they had leased the rights to the original Captain Marvel. But, there's that trademark issue. They could not put his name in the title, because Marvel Comics had the trademark. This is the test I was telling you about. So, they put their heads together at DC Comics and said, you know, since we're going to get the whole schmear, Captain Marvel, Mary Marvel, Captain Marvel Jr., Hoppy the Marvel Bunny, the Lieutenant Marvel, since they all get their powers from the same guy, Shazam!, from saying the same magic word, Shazam! Well, Captain Marvel Jr. would say Captain Marvel, but that's another issue. They were still the same powers, the powers of Shazam! So, they said, let's call the book with one magic word, Shazam! The original Captain Marvel. But then, wouldn't you know it, Marvel Comics lawyers got in touch with DC Comics and said, hey, you can't put Captain Marvel's name anywhere on the cover or we're going to sue you. So... DC Comics could no longer pull that fast one, and they changed the title to, with one magic word, Shazam! 
the world's mightiest mort. And so it was. So anybody who didn't bother actually picking up the comic book, opening it up, and reading the damn thing could be forgiven for not knowing that the hero's name, the hero who wore the red suit with the golden lightning bolt, that his name was Captain Marvel and not Shazam. And since the TV show was just called Shazam, no with one magic word, no anything else, if you never tuned into the TV show, you might not know that the hero's name was Captain Marvel and not Shazam. So, time went on. Marvel Comics decided to get into the graphic novel market because graphic novels and independent comic books and creator-owned stuff was exploding. So, their very first graphic novel was The Death of Captain Marvel, written and drawn by Jim Starlin, who had done some of the best work on their Captain Marvel, transforming him from an alien warrior to a cosmic space hippie. The Death of Captain Marvel occurred, which meant that Marvel Comics Captain Marvel was now dead but they needed to keep hold of that trademark. And this all started in 1982. So they created another Captain Marvel. This one was named Monica Rambeau, a black female Harbor Patrol officer in New Orleans, and she first appeared in an annual edition of The Amazing Spider-Man, and then she became a member of The Avengers, and then she became leader of The Avengers, until the editorial staff at Marvel Comics decided that they didn't want her to be leader of The Avengers anymore for various reasons I'm not going to go into now. So. Time went on, 1986, DC Comics went through its Crisis on Infinite Earths and decided to reboot, restart, reimagine their original Captain Marvel, and Roy Thomas created Shazam! A New Beginning. But it was still Billy Batson, still the old wizard Shazam, still the hero in the red suit with the gold lightning bolt named Captain Marvel. Then, the early 90s came on, comic book explosion, everybody's kid's brother's uncle's dog buying up comic books left and right, so Marvel Comics floated, flooded the market with annuals one year, every superhero had an annual, and in every annual comic there was a new superhero, and in Silver Surfer's annual comic the new superhero was Legacy, who was the son of Captain Marvel. His name was Genis Vell, or Genis Vell, however you want to pronounce it. But his hero name was Legacy, because Marvel Comics still had a Captain Marvel. But, next thing you know, a year or so later, Legacy has got his own series. And his series is called Captain Marvel. So when he finally meets up with Monica Rambeau, Monica Rambeau gets all upset, but then she decides, you know what, you're good with it, I'm good with it, I shall change my name to Photon, like... That's really an impressive superhero name. So Genesvel is now Marvel Comics Captain Marvel. During that whole flood the market, let's sell as many comics as we can comic book boom era, there was a DC vs. Marvel series in which heroes from either company battled each other, followed by the Amalgam Universe in which DC and Marvel Comics superheroes were melded, so you'd have Superman and Captain America forming Super Soldier, and Batman and Wolverine merging and forming Dark Claw, and Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel merging and forming Captain Marvel. But he never had his own comic. He was just a member of a superhero team background, only had a few lines and a couple of issues. Don't even worry about it. Meanwhile, back over at DC in 1994, they decide to reboot their Captain Marvel again. Maybe it was had something to do with the Zero Hour thing. Probably not, but it happened during the same time. In any event, Jerry Ordway created a new Captain Marvel series called The Power of Shazam. But it was still Billy Batson meets the old wizard, becomes a hero named Captain Marvel. Now, the big difference between... The Power of Shazam Captain Marvel and the New Beginning Captain Marvel and the original Captain Marvel was that in the original Captain Marvel, the hero and the boy had different personalities, separate consciousnesses with the same memories. But it was magic. It was a comic book. Who cares? There was no psychological problems involved with this. However, in New Beginning and in Power of Shazam, when Billy said Shazam, he was still himself inside the body of Captain Marvel. Big change, but... It was still Billy Batson, it was still Shazam, it was still Captain Marvel. Oh, and in that Power of Shazam series, Mary Batson could turn into a hero by saying Shazam, and she was the lady Captain Marvel. And in an alternate reality created by Dr. Savannah in that series, the Batson's parents were both...
Captain Marvels. Meanwhile, over in Marvel Comics, Jenis Vell had his own series once or twice or three times, depending upon how you count it, and Peter David decided to introduce a new Captain Marvel, Phyla Vell, uh, Jenis Vell's sister of an alternate reality that Jenis Vell created after he destroyed the universe. Don't think too much about it. And this Captain Marvel had all the same powers of Jenis Vell, who had all the same powers of Marvell. Fly, strong, nega bands, energy bolts, the works. And she also happens to be a lesbian and has a long relationship with Moondragon. Long story, not going to go into it. Meanwhile, back over at DC, after nearly 40 years of having a superhero whose name is not the same as the title of the book, in which he is, DC Comics had this big crossover crisis thing, during which the old wizard Shazam was killed off, and Captain Marvel took his place. His costume turned white, his hair grew long, and now he's called Marvel or Lord Marvel or something like that. Meanwhile, Freddie Freeman, the alter ego of Captain Marvel Jr., has lost his powers, has to go through a series of labors to earn those powers back. These were published in a series called The Trials of Shazam. When he gets all those powers back, he gets the red suit, he has the job that Captain Marvel had back on Earth, but his superhero name would be Shazam. But that character never really caught on, and they never really did anything with him. While this was going on, Jeff Smith had been given the franchise for the name Captain Marvel and created a series called Captain Marvel and the Monsters Society of Evil, taking the name from a series that had been in the original Fawcett series. And in this version, Billy Batson and Captain Marvel were separate personalities, but by the end of the series, and when DC Comics started up a new ongoing series called Billy Batson and the Magic of Shazam, the characters were back to being the same personality when Billy Batson would say the magic word Shazam, he would be Captain Marvel, still with the mind of Billy Batson. And again, it was Billy Batson meets Shazam, says the magic word, becomes Captain Marvel. Meanwhile, over at Marvel Comics. They had their own company-wide crossover crisis things, the Civil Wars, the Skrull Invasion, and so forth. And while all that was going on, Jenis Vell got himself a new set of powers, called himself Photon, which pissed off Monica Rambeau again, who changed her name to Pulsar, like that's even more impressive. And that character was disrupting the space-time continuum, so Baron Zemo sent him off to the four corners of the universe of space-time, or whatever, something like that, and we never saw him again. But Philavel, who is now the new Captain Marvel, wound up getting the powers and job of a superhero known as Quasar, quantum bands instead of nega bands, so now she was called Quasar instead of Captain Marvel. So Marvel Comics needed another Captain Marvel, so they brought down this alien Skrull from the alien race that was rival to the Kree, genetically engineered to look like Captain Marvel, uh, mind altered to think he was Captain Marvel with all of Captain Marvel's memories. They did such a good job, they did it too well, and now he even believed he was Captain Marvel. So he tried to do the job of Captain Marvel. He didn't even believe he was a Skrull even when they proved to him that he was a Skrull. He just tried to take on the mantle of Captain Marvel and serve the Earth the way Captain Marvel had used to serve the Earth, and then he got killed doing so. But, turns out, Marvel Comics had brought in this new character named Novar, who was a Kree from another dimension, and after he came to Earth, he wound up taking the name Marvel Boy. When he found this new scroll Captain Marvel, Kunur was his name, dying in his arms, he decided to take on the mantle of Captain Marvel, and when he joined Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers, he was Captain Marvel. That didn't last long. He left the Dark Avengers, being, uh, you know, jaded and turned off by what they were doing, and took on a new costume in the name The Protector, and now he's something else I lost track. So, Marvel Comics needed a new Captain Marvel. I'll get back to that. Meanwhile, over at DC Comics, they had yet another company-wide crisis thing that went on and totally rebooted almost all the characters that they have in something that they call the New 52. And in this New 52, they of course had to do something with that copyright that they now actually owned, having bought it outright in 1991, 
something to do with this character whose alter ego is Billy Batson, who says the magic word Shazam, and who they've been selling under the trademark of Shazam because they cannot use the trademark Captain Marvel because Marvel Comics owns the Captain Marvel trademark. Did you all follow me this far? That was the test. Now keep with me, we're almost home. But first, in something called Flashpoint, the character in the red suit with the lightning bolt in his chest, whose alter ego is Billy Batson, also had the alter ego of five other kids, including Freddie Freeman and Mary Batson, and when they all said Shazam together, they turned into Captain Thunder! Gee, I wonder where they got that name from. But he only appeared in a limited run series, and after that was done, the New 52 kicked in, and this DC Comics rebooted all its superheroes, including the one that they would sell under the trademark Shazam. And here's what it was. Billy Batson meets the old wizard Shazam, who gives him the powers of the same six elders. And when the boy says Shazam, he turns into a big hero with a red suit with a lightning bolt on his chest. And the hero's name is Shazam. And by the way, he winds up being adopted by a foster home in which there's also a girl named Mary and a boy named Freddy. And when they all say Shazam together, each one of them winds up as a different Shazam hero, each with different focuses on their powers, strength, speed, wisdom, etc. That's why, right now, the hero that is sold under the trademark Shazam from DC Comics is actually named Shazam. But, DC Comics is also keeping the Captain Marvel character alive because in an alternate universe, in one of their 52 alternate universes, which is where their whole new 52 comes from, is a character that looks exactly like the original Captain Marvel, who is named Captain Marvel. And in certain cartoons that DC is putting out, that original Captain Marvel, or at least a character who looks a lot like him that is called Captain Marvel, is still called Captain Marvel. So, while DC was going through its whole New 52 thing, Marvel Comics needed to create a new Captain Marvel to keep the trademark alive. So they took Carol Danvers. Remember Carol Danvers? Well, you remember Carol Danvers was head of security at the Cape back when Dr. Walter Lawson was working there. And in the course of her duties, she wound up being in the same room as a Kree psychomagnetron machine, which exploded, and Marvell was there to protect her. And so she wound up absorbing all this Kree radiation, which in 1976 gave her the power of becoming Ms. Marvel. Now that's Ms. pronounced with a Z, spelled M-S period. Get it right. This is important because she was the feminist superhero at being 1976. And she had much the same powers of Marvel Comics' Captain Marvel. When her costume was based on Captain Marvel's new costume. Then she lost her memories and her powers. Then she got new powers and called herself binary. Then she lost those powers and got her original Ms. Marvel powers back and she called herself Warbird. And then, in an alternate reality, she wound up being Captain Marvel, the greatest hero on Earth. But that alternate reality only lasted a few months in the Marvel Universe, and when reality went back to normal, she went back to being Ms. Marvel. And when there was nobody carrying the mantle of Captain Marvel, she decided to carry the mantle of Captain Marvel, got herself a new costume, got herself a new comic book series, and that's who is Captain Marvel in the Marvel Universe now. So after all that, is anybody confused yet? No? Well, just watch this one more time and I bet you will be. So there you have it. That's all the Captain Marvels I could come up with off the top of my head. Let's see what our total score is. That's a lot of Captain Marvels. Now let's see how long it took. Okay, that took a while. Longer than I expected. So, let's just preemptively answer the question for all the people who are going to ask all those stupid questions at any website comments page about any news about any movie involving a Shazam or a Captain Marvel. Marvel Comics owns the trademark. They can call a movie Captain Marvel. DC owns the rights to the character named Captain Marvel. The original Captain Marvel, the one whose alter ego is Billy Batson and says Shazam, and has chosen to trademark everything with that character as Shazam. If they decide to go 
with the new 52 version of that character, then the character will be named Shazam. If they decide to go with any other version of the pre-new 52 character, they ought to call that character Captain Marvel because that's the name of the character. And if Marvel Comics decides to put out a character named Captain Marvel, who knows which Captain Marvel it's going to be. It's likely going to be the Carol Danvers Captain Marvel because their live-action stage show, Marvel Universe, has that Captain Marvel in it. So, anybody confused yet? If not, watch the whole thing over again. You'll get confused somewhere. Anyway, it was important enough for me to get that out that I sat here in this hot, sweaty room in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, on this hot summer day, just because I knew it was important enough that all you out there got the story straight. I'm Captain Zorik. This has been Captain Marvel Culture, and we're coming at you.